We're going to, today we're going to talk about why you need to invest and the major reason why is because you're, if you don't invest the money you have it's going to go down in value whether you invest or not. Take for instance if you have one dollar 30 years from now that dollar will probably be worth mm, maybe 25 cents to 30 cents in t uh, today's dollars so you really have to think about how to protect your assets because if you don't, if you just think, you know what, the bank is FDIC insured, I'm just going to protect it by keeping it there. The truth is, that does not work. It doesn't work at all. No, it actually does not. Because you are guaranteed to lose that way. Even though the bank says it's FDIC insured, that just means that it protects the nominal dollar amount. Now, what I mean by nominal dollars, it means that it will preserve the idea that it's one dollar. It will not protect you from the fact that it loses value over time. So uh, even if even if something even if your dollar is worth a penny forty or fifty years from now, it still will say one dollar on it, and you will that you know, that is your protection. But that's not protection at all. So let's talk about investing because that's the only way forward. Investing allows for you to, over time, make an incredible amount of money. But the one thing that's required is patience. And I know that most of you have zero patience. And that's fine. I, I have zero patience on YouTube, too. I'm, I watch a channel and I'm saying, this is so damn boring. I'm out of here. I'm not going to watch this garbage. That's perfectly fine. But investing, you can't have that kind of mindset because patience is something that will really reward you over time because what happens with investing is there's a thing called compounding returns. Now what the hell is a compound returns? Basically it means that the money you earn through investments, you earn money on that as well over time. And as that makes, uh, and as that increases in value, you're making money on top of that. As example, you uh, make 10% on $100. You now have $110. You are not, if you're increasing that value, you actually are increasing it on that new 110 instead of 100. So over time, there's a sense of compounding, a sense that uh, w whatever you put in originally, if you give it a 30 or 40 year, 40, 30 or 40 year period of time. Uh, you really are benefiting from, from compounding. So the young people in my audience, if you're in your 20s, you ought to say, you know what? It's really not worth uh, wasting my money on frivolous things. Uh, you know, like the new iPhone 11, even though I'll be buying it, but I'm older than you, so I don't have as much time for the compounding as if I was 20. So for someone who's 20, you should say, eh, maybe I'll go with some cheap used um, crap on eBay. And I'll invest the money because I have a ton of more time to invest, and I think that I think that really is a smart approach. Now, one of the reasons why you want to do it is not only to protect your money from the issue of inflation; it's the idea that it would actually would allow you to have more freedom in the long run. And people never really think too much about that, but. Uh, when people talk about retirement, what they really are talking about is freedom from the drudgery of going to their nine-to-five uh, job day after day. And they hate their job. They don't even want to. They don't want to go there. Especially a lot of people don't, at least. And some people actually, if you look on Instagram, there are a lot of people who have figured out a way to retire much younger. So the only way to do this, though, is to have some sort of investment that allows your net worth to grow and you maybe you live off the interest maybe you're focused on growth and you can turn uh, a certain amount into a large pile like for instance Warren Buffett he 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 wasn't a billionaire when he was in his 20s but he understood the concept of waiting and and patience for instance he would actually trade if you're in your 20s he would actually trade his life for yours because you have so much uh, more time on his uh, available for you. I mean, he 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 once joked that he's at salvage value, but so that's one reason why 
you're in an, actually at a, an advantage when you're younger. You have a lot more time and you get to focus on certain investments that people like Warren Buffett ca uh, cannot take advantage of. For instance, a lot of people have noticed quite rightly that smaller companies grow a lot faster and there's a reason why that is. It's because there's so much more room to grow. Anybody who's young and talking about investing in a company like Google or Apple, you're foolish. These are companies near a trillion dollars. Think about how hard it is. I mean, it was very hard to get to one trillion. How much harder is it to get to two trillion? That I mean, we're talking about companies that are uh, much, much larger than, than the GDP of most countries. So once you're in that range, it's very, very difficult. And Apple is even finding that it's difficult to, to grow from, from this point. I mean, they're getting to the Apple Arcade and the videos. Okay, I don't want to get into all these other things. But so the most important, Re there are two reasons to invest. Oh, the mo major reason why is to preserve your purchasing power. And I'll give you an example. When I first started going to Starbucks, I bought like a tall coffee. It was a dollar forty. Now at most Starbucks, the equivalent, the same coffee is about two dollars and twenty uh, five cents, something somewhere around there. But if you really want a much better experience, a lot of coffees at Starbucks are now in the four to five dollar range and these are this is not like a frappuccino or something like that it's really just a very special orange and uh drip coffee i mean it's not drip it's usually they make it in a special way whether it's a clover machine or or uh or a pour over so the most important thing is to realize that whatever you will be buying is going to be more expensive in the future whether it's food whether it's entertainment whether it's housing, whether it's cars, I mean, we're talking about, I've seen so many, uh, people don't seem to blink at all, at all anymore when they see a car that's, um, I don't know, six, in the sixty to $80,000 range. It seems kind of expensive for a lot of cars that are not Ferraris nowadays. So just keep in mind that whatever you think is worth buying today is definitely going to be more. And so if you want to preserve your purchasing power, you definitely need to invest. Now, where to invest? Yeah. Uh, Despite the fact that on YouTube, everybody seems to be focusing on on real estate, but uh, one problem with real estate that most people don't focus on is that most people are very focused on a very particular market, and oftentimes those markets can be a lot more unpredictable than, than people uh, say it is. As an example, there's a prominent YouTuber, he talks about how he owns a, a few homes, and it's, uh, it's uh, in in San Bernardino is a very risk-free, uh, well, not risk-free, but he kind of gives the impression that it's very safe. But the problem is that in California, they're changing the laws with regard to rent control, just <laughs> pulling the rule, uh, rug from from the, from the landlords, and they're not realizing what's, what's coming for them. So uh, oftentimes with something like that, you're stuck. I mean, it's very hard to say, hey, I made a bad investment investing in California. I want to get out of this investment. I want to put it in somewhere else. It's very hard. Real estate is a very liquid investment, actually. When people want to get out, you cannot because nobody's buying. So I think, uh, especially long term, equities definitely outperforms real estate, despite the fact that maybe this decade was a very hot uh, decade and it could have just been because of a lot of unusual patterns like uh, extremely low interest rates that that definitely help to fuel the fire of, of the real estate market. I mean the fact that you have people who uh, seriously can't afford in most of these markets uh, like San Francisco and Los Angeles, Seattle, and place, other places and huge uh, homeless epidemic shows that we're kind of reaching the limit probably of where prices can go. Whereas with uh, equities when you're focusing on our profitable businesses that are actually delivering goods and services, not just the land. I mean, land is not a productive asset. I mean, I know that a lot of people have been fooled by where things are, but main, real estate can be a portion of your portfolio to hedge against inflation. But in terms of real serious growth, that actually the stock market uh, cannot be beat, especially if you're very focused on either being diversified and not uh, uh, not being too too risky, I think that that would be a very good good choice. And the other the other thing that's really important about um, about the stock market is that 
it is intended for those two things to hedge against inflation and, and for growth. Uh, thirdly, most people online think of the stock market as kind of like a casino, and that's fine. Uh, it can be fun to just rattle off with each other like, hey, did you, did you do this? I killed you with this stock. Blah, blah. But a lot of these people never talk about their losses. So I think it's best not to get into this um, war online between people who just want to say how great they are. It's better to focus on what your goals are. It's not about sharing how much you made or anything like that. Nobody cares. I mean, those people are not going to help you when things are, go wrong. So you really have to focus on this not being a competition. This is a very singular focused thing that you need to do. And that's the only way you're going to be successful is thinking about how you're going to achieve those two objectives. Uh, I think the easiest way for you to, to get started, of course, is Vanguard. I've said it many times on this channel. Vanguard has very low, uh, extremely low uh, annual fees. I think it's, it's so low that you won't you won't believe it, and so they won't rip you off at all. And I think that they're, I think that they just have a broad range of um, assets that you can invest in. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask ask them uh, online. And you have to always hit the like button, smash that damn thing. You know you want to, and subscribe because there's going to be a lot more great videos like this. And thank you very much for my current subscribers. I really appreciate you. You're always honored and respected. And uh, we'll talk time, sometime soon. Just And also keep in mind, this is just uh, general advice. I'm not a financial advisor of any sort. Always consult an expert. Don't don't listen to amateurs in, um, uh, sitting in an old chair. Okay, thank you.